Hello, boxing world. How everybody doing? Good, that's good. First of all, I want to thank everybody. Spence, Derek James, Showtime, uh, GTV. I want to spank that side over there. Because obviously, they looking at us like we the B side. That's all right. That's what we want. I'm glad they got this fight made. I'm so glad. I'm glad both fighters stayed the course and stayed true to the game to show the world that who the best fighter is. And uh, that just speaks true knowledge and true volumes about each of each fighter's character. But I will say this, we're going to show who the best fighter in the world is July 29th. It will be us. Don't miss it. I promise you, don't miss it. I know Spence is coming. I know Derek is going to train the shit out of him. I know his team is going to do a damn good job over there. I promise you, from the bottom of my heart, we're going to walk away victoriously. You know, I'm very happy to be here. And this is something that has been coming for a long, long time. A lot of talk, a lot of uh, hearing, a lot of speculation, people talking. So it's all about right now, it's about showing and proving. And some I can't wait. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of being asked questions about it. I know everybody on the stage, tired of talking about it, tired of being asked questions about it. So it's time to get busy. It's all I care about, getting busy, seeing my guy go out there and doing everything he needs to do. He did what he said he was going to do, get those three belts. Now it's time to go get one more, one more. It's all about big fish right now. And I like you guys, but at the same time, hey, listen, we're, we're really co-workers. Only way we can get this thing going, we got to work together. But night of, night of the fight, is really is showtime for real. <laughs> and we're going to make it happen. Thank you all. What's going on, everybody? Y'all don't look excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited that we're here today and that we're getting this fight done. I'm excited for you, the fans. I actually got a gift for each and every one of y'all. And why? Because I love y'all. Because without y'all, there's no us. Uh, so I'm going to give y'all a gift with the presence of myself and Errol, <laughs> July 29th, so y'all can witness greatness. There will be greatness July 29th that you guys will witness. And how do we measure greatness? We, us, you guys, we measure greatness by errors. You had the Sugar Ray Robinson error you had the Ali era, the Marvin Hagler, the, the Tommy Hearns. You even had the Floyd Mayweather, his era. But July 29th, I'm going to show each and every one of y'all why. This era is the Terrence Crawford era. Yeah! Yeah! Come fight night, he called himself the big fish, right? But what you do when the fish get took out the water? You suffocate them. Let's go. I want to thank everybody for being here. This is the biggest fight I feel like in boxing right now. This is a legendary fight. This is definitely an old school fight. This is the fight that my dad used to talk to me about and older people tell me about where you had Sugar Ray Little versus Tommy Hearns. You had Duran and all them. You had De La Hoya and Trinidad fighting. You had the best fighting the best. And finally, we're at this point where, you know, me and Terrence Crawford had to get on the phone, talk about it, and now, you know, it's finally happening. The best fighting the best. I feel like this is an old school fight, creme de la creme, and this is going to prove not only the best what's way in the world, it's going to prove who the best fighter in the world is. If you know my mentality, you know, it's to win, it's to go all out, give it everything. His mentality is the same thing. So I want everybody to tune in July 29th, come to the fight, because we're going to have a crawfish bowl. <laughs>
So everybody make sure they're there, man. It's gonna be enough for everybody, I promise you that. Well, like I said, that piggybacks on what I said before. It shows that I'm the greatest fighter of this era. No one, no man have captured undisputed in two different weight classes. Tia Fimo did last weekend. Tia Fimo definitely wasn't. He was a lineal, correction, but he wasn't undisputed. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> Sorry, sir. You tried it. But yes, once again, I will be the first male boxer to actually capture the welterweight champion in two divisions, and that would solidify me as the greatest fighter of this era. Definitely not, man. I'm not gonna lie, Tyrant got the best matchmakers in the business. You ain't fought nobody, man. You haven't beat anybody undisputed at 140. Who you fought at 135, and who you fought at 147. Even you fought Sean Porter, even Sean Porter said- What did he, I do to Sean did, Porter that you couldn't Sean do? Porter say, even said did he, he did not Sean train Porter like he should. He didn't do the do. things that his daddy told him to do. What are you, you talking about? Even his daddy her. said it. Even his daddy said it. You but heard that I got the Even his daddy said it. You but heard. Even Kev Brook, he was already broken. So was he broken when you fought? About? No, he wasn't broken. How come I broke the other eye. He came off of I broke the other eye. Yeah, that's how I got broke. That's how I got broke. He came off a stoppage. What does it matter? He came off a stoppage and then he fought you. What does it what does it matter? Months prior. What does it matter? So was he broken or not? No, he wasn't broken. No, he wasn't broken. Yeah, you're right. You right. What are you talking about? I had the same surgery he had, and what happened? So what they say about you then? You fight me then? I'm gonna break the other eye. <laughs> so what they, what they say? So I'm broken then, right? Well, you broken. You gonna be broken July 29th. <laughs> yeah, oh, we gonna see. You gonna be broken. So it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, that, but I want to ask you about that. I, I loved it on social media. You characterized July 29th as a fish fry. Can you enlighten the people on what you meant by that? I'm gonna gut them. I'm gonna feed them to everybody that eat fish in here. <laughs> <laughs> Call yourself the big fish, we're gonna have enough food for everybody. We'll see, we'll definitely see. Put some potatoes on the side of it too. <laughs> hey man, y'all go to ESJ.com, the truth.com and go buy that iPad, man. We gonna roll him up and smoke him in Vegas. We, we, we'll see. Arrow? We don't, we, don't, we don't smoke over here. It's legal in mean? Vegas, or man. We gonna roll him all, over and smoke do, him. All we do hey, is man. fish fillet. We gonna roll him over and smoke him, man. We go hunting over here, and best like believe I said, we hunting you we down. We gonna roll him up and smoke this dude. Uh, Arrow, you described it on social media as, quote, a one-sided ass whooping. I'm gonna punish Terrence Crawford. That's how it always is. It's gonna be a one-sided ass whooping. I mean, he gonna come in with the mentality and you know, it's gonna probably take a few rounds, but and he a stubborn dude. So, but we gonna, like I said, man, everybody get broke. We gonna break him, man. We gonna break him like a horse. They gonna say Bud Crawford is special. And all the people that thought he was gonna do what he say he was gonna do, they gonna say, wow, we was wrong about that kid. He is special. He is great. That's what they gonna walk away, walk away saying. This boy is great. I can assure you that. And he'll, he'll give me my respect after the fight. Right now, he in the mode of- I give your respect you know, now. No, 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 no. I give your I'm respect talking, now. I'm talking about when I whoop that ass, you gonna really I give your respect now. I give your respect be, now. Damn. You great well, right now. I'm gonna have to do it again, but- Like, yeah. like the rest of them, Simon Hearns, all them dudes are great. Marvin Harry, Durant, all them guys are great, man. But hey, man, sometimes dudes get broke. How the hell Earl Spence keep breaking these men? These grown ass men. I can guarantee you a great action pack, old school type fight. If you if you've been craving one of those fights from the 70s, 80s, early 90s, you gotta tune in to this fight, man. This this is a legendary fight, I feel like. You know, belts aside, all that type stuff. I'm talking about you talk about Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford. This is the biggest fight in boxing, period especially action pack wise. If you know his mentality, you know my mentality, you already know, man, we, we, going, for, we going for the victory, but a tough victory. I know he's not gonna try to break. I'm definitely not breaking. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be all out war. I think it's gonna be tactical in the first, in the first couple rounds, but as rounds go, 
as the rounds go on, you know what I'm saying, he, I'm going to try to break his will. He's going to try to break my will, and uh, we're both going to go for the victory. I'm, everybody between July 29th is going to be an all-out war, action-packed fight, and you're going to want to tune in to this fight because this fight is going to be talked about for decades. I know I said it, but they were my words. I want your response to that. You believe the winner, pound for pound, best fighter in the world? The winner of this fight is definitely the best fighter in the world. I mean, pound for pound, that's all, you know, that's, I, I don't know how they judge that, but everybody know this the best fighter in the world, whoever wins this fight. This creme de la creme, this the best fighter in the world, no questions asked, no nothing. So make sure everybody tune in to this fight. Bud Crawford, same question to you. For all those thousands of people who will come out to T-Mobile Arena, spend their hard-earned money, buy the pay-per-view on Showtime pay-per-view, what can you guarantee they're going to get on July 29th? I can guarantee everybody is going to witness something special that night. Errol Spence, he don't like to back up. I'm the type of fighter where you push, I push even harder. You hit me, I want to fight even harder. Um, he got a big heart. I, get a, I got a big heart. He loved the fight. I love the fight. And it just makes for a great action-packed fight with a lot of, you know, excitement in it. So July 29th is going to be a great, a great night for boxing. I feel like this is definitely a legacy fight and a fight that should be talked about in the whole boxing community if it's not all through the social media's outlets but I do believe that this is a old school type type fight where you know you got all the greats fighting each other like I said in this era this is the great fighting each other so yeah tune in July 29th buy the fight if you can't be there Love it. All right, I know we got some questions from members of the media. All we ask is that you, you know, identify yourself, tell us uh, who you're with, and ask your question. How you doing, uh, Tyler Tynes from the Los Angeles Times? Just wondering uh, for Bud first, what took so long for y'all to finally come together and do the fight? Listen, it doesn't matter what took so long. All that matters is we're here now. I'm excited. Everybody else excited. And July 29th, myself and Errol Spence will be sharing the ring together and putting on a great show for each and every one of you guys. Can you describe in detail what happens when you see that moment that you need to kill the opponent or knock him out? What takes over? Well, I don't know. It's an inner bulldog in me. You know, when I see that blood, when I see weakness, I just go for the kill. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, all types of great fighters got that instinct that when they see one of their opponents hurt or wounded, they go for the kill. Thank you. Greg Rosenstein, The Athletic. Uh, for Errol, you two have both been compared constantly over the years in the division and on pound for pound lists. What specific skill sets do you see you having the advantage over Terrence? I mean, I got a lot of uh, skill sets I feel like advantage over him. But at the end of the day, I feel like this fight is is basically so even, you know, it's going to be more about just being more focused and, you know, not getting out of focus, especially in the later rounds, and just making sure, staying on point all throughout the fight and making sure you don't lose focus because that's how you end up getting caught. Errol Manukakopian with the BoxingScene.com. Uh, you're going to be coming off a nearly 16-month layoff. Are you concerned your time away from the ring will impact your preparation and your performance come fight night? I've been off longer, so, <laughs> I mean, a 16-month layoff, that's cool. I mean, it was nothing I was recovering from, so that was more rest anyway. I mean, it ain't like the other times where it was a car crash or a retina surgery or something like that, so... It'll be, it'll be fine, definitely be fine. Hi Folks, guys. we got one more? Yep. One more. Hi guys, Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV. Uh, I wanna ask this question for both Earl and Terrence. I've heard that you guys spend a lot of time FaceTiming and communicating to make this bout happen. 
What's something that you guys learned about each other in your private conversations? Um, just, I mean, you're just talking, talking about family and, you know, situations and stuff like that, but, you know, just getting to fill out for each other. So, I mean, you learn a couple of things, but, I mean, we're just talking, filling each other out. Well, I would say the same, you know, arrows, probably outside of right now, probably a cool dude, but I feel as if both of us was mature enough to get on the phone and talk to one another, to be able to sit here and make the fight for each and every one of you fans. Guys, let's get the entire camps up here. Let's take some pictures.